Oh, my Dizzy's here with us now. Big Man United hey. fan. Eric is done. Malassia done. Give me your thoughts, my friends. Well, um, I, it, there's, there, it, there's a lot going on, to be honest. I tuned out of everything football for a little while uh, when, when the season ended because I was just like, man... I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna take myself out of this for a while. But you've been doing the Lord's work. You've been keeping me updated and whatnot. And initially, when I first like you know started to 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 kind of dive back into what's going on as far as United goes, everybody was up in arms. So naturally, I was like, wait a minute, I've, I've missed. I must have missed something. So obviously, nat my natural response was, oh man, we're really this shit. Is really this bad? We ain't signing nobody. Everybody signing everybody. And then and then I realized, wait a minute, this windows have be only been open for like two weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so, but as far as, as far as the signing goes, um, Malassia to me is music to my ears. Y you know how I feel about Luke Shaw. I'm, I'm, I'm done with everybody on the left. I'm so done with him. So bring me a replacement. I'll take anybody. I don't know much about him, but guess what? We're going to find out. Uh, Christian Eriksen, I think it's an interesting signing because it's kind of, um, like we was talking about at the end of last season, um, as far as trying to create a picture of how Ten Hag wants to play, because I, up until now we had no idea because we didn't know who was going to be here. So now we getting we're starting to get a better picture of who's going to be here, who isn't going to be here. So you can kind of start to get an idea of um, of how we're going to play. But yeah, I'm interested to see how it all works out. I think preseason is going to be a real, especially the first couple games, to see like how actually like he's trying to implement his style. I think it's going to be really interesting, man. Mate, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, look, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm only having a bit of a laugh when I call people out and say say certain things to people. I don't mean it uh, in a in a horrible way. But I think what's been frustrating for me as a Man United fan, kind of sitting back and and, and watching the transfer window unfold, has been people would see Jamie Jackson say, "Oh, I've I've heard that." Ericsson's rejected Man United. And I'm like, that's fair to, to like report on that because I report on all types of news. But it's how people would ignore the seven or eight very positive pieces of news about Ericsson to United and they'll focus and hone in on just the bad one, just the one that doesn't yeah. work well. And they've done it with Frankie Dion. Like every story that's positive, no, nah, it can't be true. Every positive story that doesn't sound great, yeah, that's what's happening. That there, and it's almost a case of, why don't you just slow down a little bit? Why don't you just relax a little bit? Why don't you just take your time with it, as as they say, and kind yeah. of go, and kind of go from there? That that's been my frustration with it, really. And look, did I know one hundred percent we were going to sign Christian Eriksen? No, but he got mm. my green tick, and I only put the green ticks out. I'll give you an example of my my green ticks. Yeah, those transfers come to fruition. No, because the world changes. But only last night. Chelsea and, and, and uh, Spurs still tried to hijack the Gabriel Jesus deal. They made another inquiry. And mm. it's, no, there was no concrete links. Well, no, there was. And they, was, they were looking at him the whole time. Like, don't be bought in by your club's PR. You know, when your club says, oh, we're walking away because we've changed our minds, you mean the player said no. You know, it's... it's yes. well, I, don't, I, don't believe, <laughs> I don't believe Tottenham walked away. I believe mm. Tottenham knew two weeks ago he's picking Manchester United because the news about United now being a front runner came out 24 hours before Spurs said they were walking away. And that's not a dig at Spurs. Mm. That's how these things happen, you know. It, it's it's as simple. It's as simple as that for me. But it's good business. Yeah. What do you want to? See? Who else do you want? I mean, what's your thoughts on Martinez and and De Jong? Do you see those deals happening? Um. Well. Um. I think. I think. Um. I think. I think it will be good to get in as many of Ten Hag's men as possible because, like we've been saying. In all the streams that we've been in, the players that we have currently or the players that we had last season and the season before that, they're simply not good enough. So, um, and and I was watching a, um, a stream that you and, uh, I think Straight Facts that you and Leas was doing, where you was talking about, I like the approach of, if we can't get Ten Hogs Man, we'll move on to a different key area where we can get Ten Hogs Man and then we'll come back next season where we can where where we can get the number one because it doesn't make sense to oh um we can't get let's okay let's say martinez oh we can't get martinez let's just go and get nathan ake for example why well we need one in that position but it, it, it's just it's a, it's a shirt on it's a it's a number on a shirt so me as well i, I don't think so so i think if tenag really wants him then i think we have to it, it just has to be done um i think yuri and timber i think the interesting thing with him is he didn't back himself to get in front of 
Harry Maguire or Lindelof or someone like that. To me, that's not United quality. So I'm not with it. So if Martinez backs himself, I'm 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 with it all the way. And who who's the other person you said? Um De Jong. The oh Frankie. Uh, funny, funny thing you were saying about the about the fungus fans, where we can't win for losing in this in the whole De Jong saga, where it's like if we sign him well, he's a mercenary. He didn't want to come anyway. He's gonna flop. You don't have a CDM, so it's not gonna work. Um, and all the other excuses. But then if he doesn't sign, well, it's a massive catastrophe. United's fell off. They don't have the pulling power that they used to. <laughs> so, so. It's just a, it's just a funny one to me, man. I think, to be honest, I really think I think that De Jong will happen, and I have a sneaky suspicion that will be Arsenal to Martinez. Could I be wrong? Of course, but I have a sneaky feeling that um, the the Ten Hag uh, relationship, and um, also I think you was it, I think it was you and um, a, a journalist I forget which one it was that was saying that Arsenal want him to play left back and we want him to play centre back and Ten Hag's been training him to be a centre back since when they've been together. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, look, I think it's it's such a yeah, and, and that for me is where I think United have um, such a good opportunity here. It, it all depends where the player wants to go. I think Arsenal have got a genuine chance of signing him. I think Arsenal would genuinely in for him. I think Arsenal mm. um, are, are in a really good position. There is no shadow of a doubt around it. But I, I just, honestly, if I'm being really blunt and really honest, I just see Man United pulling that off. And then suddenly you're looking at a, a brilliant playmaker, a holder of possession in Ericsson, a very young... What I like about Malassia that's being ignored, he's young, but he's 22. He's not a 17 no, year baby. He's, he's, he's old enough to play from day one. He's old enough to play a lot of football this season. We're signing yeah. great profiles, great age, great, great age of players. And I know a lot of people have, again, you see right for doing wrong. Ah, uh, United are not so, like uh, the manager's palette for talent isn't high enough. He should be looking outside of the the realm of um, the Ajax kind of mold. W well, no, because we've got a massive player power issue at the club, and what he Thanks. needs instantly is four or five players that buy into. His, he's got four or five players that buy in. You're going to straight away get Bruno's going to be bought in because Bruno he sanctioned Bruno's deal. Mm. You've got Donny that will be bought in instantly and straight away. He's done the sensible thing, I think, with Maguire by saying, I'm going to give you a chance. Why? Because Maguire is desperate to stay. So what's Maguire going to do? He's going to buy into his ideas. That doesn't mean Maguire and Donny and Bruno will be good enough in the long term for him at Man Absolutely. United. It means you get a, you suddenly have got seven, eight players I've just named there very quickly that are going to work right. When a, when, a, when a group does it, the rest will follow suit. And it's a very smart thing that he's done. But listen, my guy, I appreciate you coming on, Dizzy, and having your say. And we'll chat again Ooh. soon, brother. Mo's on the show now. What are you saying, Mo, me old mate? How's it going, Terry? You all right? I'm good. Didn't I tell you to stay calm, my brother? <laughs> it's been a rough... I know you did, but I tell you, honestly, Saturday was very rough for me, man. I, uh, with the news of Cristiano... Um, it was tough, you know, mentally, you know, him wanting to leave and, the, you know, us not doing transfer business or anything like that. And everyone jumping on the bandwagon with, you know, uh, saying that, oh, you know, everyone's having a rant. Even myself, Terry, I was having a rant as well because, you know, it's an emotional sport, Terry. You know, we, we're, you know, we get emotional. But this deal with Ericsson, I think it's a good deal. I've always been a fan of Christian Ericsson since Spurs days. Um, and I've just liked him as a player and I've always... You know, I'm, I've just been a fan of his. And him to see him come to my night, it's a good bit of business. I have to take my hat off. Look, I'm not taking my hat off to them, but I have to for this deal. But a lot more work to be lot more work to be done, Terry. You know, uh, we need to get that De Jong deal. Um, a couple of more other signings. I know there's some more signings coming. I would love to have Anthony at the club, Terry. I, I really like him. Uh, if, we could, if we could get De Jong, Anthony, um, Martinez and someone else, I think that would be a good good transfer window. Also, about Cristiano, if Cristiano is to say with all the signings, I would make him the captain too. We need a new captain, man. Like, I can't go another season with Harry Maguire as our captain. Like, take the captaincy off him, please. And 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 just give it to Cristiano or give it to Bruno. I saw that video of Bruno when he came out I was telling Tellers and Fred off. <laughs> it was, that's what you call a captain, a, a leader. Um... A captain is someone where the youth look up to him, the players look up to look, look up to him. I don't want someone like Harry Maguire to be leading our uh, a team out next season. I'll back him as a defender, Terry, but just take the captaincy off him 
and give it to someone else and 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 also um uh, yeah i yeah that's, that's about make cristiano the captain but i'm happy with the deal terry it's, it's a start it's, it's a start but you know let's not get giddy a lot more work needs to be done by you. our football club i hear you mo great call my friend thank you very much indeed Thanks, terry. My guy, thank you, Bye. thank you, Josh. On the show, me next. Long time no speak, my brother. How are you? Yo, what's up, Terry? And I just have to reiterate everyone, stay calm. It's July, right? Because let's be honest, yeah. our players need that training, right? Eric and Hog players, they don't, they're already in modern shape. It was our players who weren't in shape, so that, that's the first point. And to Erickson, quality player, you can kind of see what Ten Hog is doing now, right? Like, he's great at keeping it simple moving the ball and everyone's talking about bruno we don't talk about bruno right bruno has no one to pass to who is also dynamic and and technical right so if you pass the ball and you just stay there kind of like mcsauce he has no place to pass the ball and move if you remember bruno's first game in january he passed the ball and moved around like a b and everyone else is standing around him it's like bruno's trying to do the whole whole thing so to me you're going to have players like the young and erickson and even another attacking outlet who's di who's dynamic and Malasia, another great signing. He, a lot of these players are two way players, which I appreciate. Listen, I, I totally agree. And, and listen, I, I think people are already starting to be negative. We have a super chat that came through here. That I don't know who the, he's talking about here, but he says, um, uh, how comes we make two signings and people are even more negative? A certain Man United fan said the window is not impressive and not first choice signings. Well, I don't know where people get it. Like, Christian Eriksen was one of the first linked players to us back in May when the manager joined. And I remember people, there were three we were looking at were De Jong. It was De Jong's name. It was um, Eriksen's name. And there was one other player who now eludes me. He was like a holding midfield player. It was, a, a what's his name? From French, uh, Zakaria. Oh, yeah, Zakaria. Yep. And he was like, oh, that'd be, that would be a good combination. So to act like Christian Eriksen wasn't a, 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 a number one choice for Man United is an absolute lie. De Jong's a number one choice and he's looking close. Lissandro Martinez, was he a number one option? Probably not. It was Urien Timber. But Urien Timber didn't say no because it's Man United. He said no because he didn't back himself to be able to get in front of Maguire. Why is that an L for Man United? That's on the player. Malassi is a player that the manager wanted at Ajax and has now brought him into this football club. Anthony is one of the key targets. The only player that we haven't got that was a key target was Darwin Nunes and Liverpool took him away. And like I said the other day, and I'll read my tweet out from the 25th of June. Every Man United, every player Man United sign, uh, sign will be framed negatively as overpriced, here for the money, or did they really want to join? Every, Man in, every player Man United are linked to um, that will not join jo join the club. It will be framed as Man United have lost their pool. Why didn't the club spend more money? And that's what's going on right now. Whatever we do, the fungus Man United fans will say w w it's a terrible job. Now I'm all for calling out the Glazers, and the Glazers need to be called out. They need to keep spending. They need to, you know, they they need to stop taking dividends. And I'll call them out on that. But I'm 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 assessing what the recruitment team are doing and what Ten Hag are doing independently because they can only deal with the hand they're dealt with by the Glazers. If we think they're not doing a good job, this is the way the, the people are very clever in how they spin it. They don't spin it with, oh, this is awful because the Glazers need to give us 100 million more. It's we're doing awful business with what we've been, with, with the budgets that we've got. That isn't attacking the Glazers. That's attacking the people doing their jobs. And they're right. very clever in how they do it because they don't specify what they mean. I'm against the Glazers. I won't pump a penny into this club. I think they're atrocious owners. But we've got a budget of about 150 million that could rise to near 200 if we make the right sales. Of the money we've spent so far on the players we're targeting, considering the position that we're in, we've done a very good job so far. And another one of their myths that's been blown out of the water today is we can't work on more than one deal at once. Well, the fact that we've got two deals completing at the same time, Martinez is moving into its final stages between Man United and Arsenal, and De Jong that appeared very close. That's literally the embodiment of more than one deal at once. These guys, are, they just annoy me with their negativity. But again, like I've said for years, it's the only way people listen to them and follow them is when they're being negative because right i get it in the comments here from that listen i love the rivals on the terrace terry you're just propping the club you're chatting <laughs> BS, da, 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 da. and it's sort of like well, hang on a minute like you lot this is what i mean by twerking for rivals what the rivals want me to say is i'm not happy it's shit we should be spending more but i don't believe that i think ericsson's a brilliant signing what's your take on martinez and de jong do you feel like the club will be able to pull that off josh 
De Jong, I still believe so because we all understand Barcelona is a very political institution. So we, we understand they have to say certain things in public. And I think De Jong is uh, being being a great uh, uh, servant to Barcelona and doing the same thing. So I think he's also playing the political game as well. So I think once it gets more over the line, then I think he'll he'll be more uh, outwardly receptive to to our club. I just think it's it's uh, all marketing and politics. But at the same time, I definitely think we can get Martinez. He he personally isn't my first choice. I would prefer someone like a Pau Torres because I can see City going for him next year, or even going as well. But I I would uh, prefer you know Ten Hag to get his people because he trusts them. It's kind of like I, I I look at this whole Ten Hag. Uh, revolution, revolution as like scuba diving, right? Because our players are drowning out there. They don't know how to play the modern game. They, it, we all, we all see it, right? With Ten Hag and his players and his coaching staff, they're essentially the scuba di- scuba dive masters, and they're slowly teaching our players how to how to swim and knowing what to do. So I, I think, as Leah says, so shout out to Leah's, you can't cheat the process, right? So that that's part of the process and getting these players in, like Erickson and De Young and Martinez, who can all be versatile and play a certain way, I think is fantastic. Appreciate that, my, my guy, Josh. Great call as ever, my friend. And we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thanks.